Um, I said bitter orange. You said mandarin orange. No, I said bitter. Sure. Mandarin. Roll the tape. We will roll the tape back. <laughs> and I will have said bitter. And anyone who disagrees with me is part of a QAnon conspiracy. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's Fume Chat, yeah, Fume Chat with Thomas and Nick. We talk perfume and fragrance with humor and wit. From Chanel number five to Angel and more. We're covering the famous scents that you're looking for. It's time for some fragrances, it's time to start the show. It's Fume Chat, yeah, Fume Chat, here we go. Hello and welcome to Fume Chat, I am Nick Gilbert. And I am not Nick Gilbert. <laughs> She's a funny one. <laughs> no, it's just a fact. Yes, I am Thomas Dunkley, the candy perfume boy. Yeah. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Fume Chat. Where we talk about perfume. That is what we do. Yeah. As in our episode, last episode, we clarified this is not a Eurovision podcast, so we will not be talking about Eurovision. Although, no, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> Although I do have something to say <laughs> about... <laughs> no. I just wanted to mention, no. Fuego. Uh. <laughs> um, um, so, bop. Celine Dion. Um, <laughs> yes, so welcome to Fume Chat, where we talk about perfume. We are going to talk about perfume today. Um, yes, we are. But, uh, but not just perfume. No. No, no. No, no. 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 <laughs> so, um, in our last episode, we kind of said that we would record more episodes. So, we just want to say, hello, hi, we've done one. <laughs> we've done one. Yeah. Consistency, thank you. Two episodes. Two episodes, we're done. Yes. Well done, everybody. Thank you. Uh, yes, so we're back. And this week we are thinking all about bergamot. Yes, bergamot. Not bergamot, as many people try and call it. Bergamot. Yes. Bergamo. Bergamo. I've heard that one, which is, yeah. I believe, a place. Yeah. <laughs> I believe that is, yeah. So without, without a T. Yes. Uh, but yes, bergamot. Bergamot. Yeah. So what even is bergamot? What is a bergamot? Hands up, can I answer this, please? Yes. <laughs> so, bergamot is a citrus fruit that they believe is a hybrid of a lemon and a mandarin orange. Not a mandarin orange. Fuck. <laughs> so, bergamot is a hybrid fruit and it's produced from a bitter orange. Um, I said bitter orange. You said mandarin orange. No, I said bitter. Sure. Roll the tape. We will roll the tape. <laughs> and I will have said bitter. And anyone who disagrees with me is part of a QAnon conspiracy. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so it's a bitter orange yes, as I said, stock yes, bitter with, <laughs> with a lemon branch grafted on and then it becomes a tree. Yes. Um, you cannot grow a bergamot from seed. It won't happen. Um, you have to do the grafting process. Okay. You can graft a bergamot branch onto a orange tree stock. Yes. And it will continue to be bergamot. Yes. Um, but yeah, the original way it was made was lemon branch onto an orange, orange base. Which I think is really a metaphor for life. Like, you can't get the fruit without the graft, you know? Uh-huh. I know you're kind of laughing, but I think that's very meaningful. You can work for your <laughs> things, you know? I thought it was a bit deep, but fine, move on. So it is the bitter orange, as I said, and the lemon. And, and the lemon. And that makes the fruit. That makes the bergamot. Yes. Yes, yes which indeed. Is the fruit. Which is a fruit. And we have a dried out one here at the lab. Yes. Um, which we got last year when we went to Capua. And it wasn't dried out at the time, it was really, it was fresh. Oh. And it's dried out over time. So what you mean is you've got a mouldy one? <laughs> no, it's not mouldy. This is the really cool thing about it. It doesn't get mouldy. Yeah. Ooh. It just dries. Ooh, it just dries. Mm. And if you, it's on the thing where the where the vetiver is, and you can tap it and it makes like a hollow sound. It's really cool. Mm. I will go do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, bergamot is a citrus fruit. So it is very zesty and la la la. In its odour. Yes. So all of the kind of things you would expect of a citrus fruit. Yes, sparkling, fresh, yep. zesty, sweet, slightly floral in its aspect. I would say that it's slightly floral, and yes. Also, I feel kind of like there's a fluffiness to bergamot. Yeah, I I think of it as like Vaseline on the lens. Yes, it's like a gauziness, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's very like Sofia Coppola-like directing style. Exactly that, exactly that. So let's have a sniff of some bergamot uh, essential oil, which, oh, oh. Which has been decolorized. Mm. <laughs> mm. It is fabulous. There's just the, it's, it is one of the most pleasant smells. I yeah. think it's sunshine. Mm. It's sunshine, and like the crazy thing is, it's harvested in the winter, 
So it shouldn't be like summery. Yeah. But it was still quite when we went to Calabria, it was still pretty warm. Yeah, actually. Well, it's Italy, isn't it? Uh, it's Saf and Italy. Yeah. Um it's lovely. I just I I thought Bergamot was kind of like, yeah, that's fine. And then we went there, me and Pia, uh, with Christoph and a bunch of other perfume people. Oh, Hello, name drop, everybody. name drop. Just everybody, just to drop it, just to drop, drop a little name there. Yeah, yeah, just with Christoph. Just yeah. with Christoph, our, our close personal friend. Um, <laughs> and it gave me like a whole new appreciation mm. for bergamot as a material, but also the way it's used in perfumery. Yeah. Because I kind of dismissed it a little bit as a kind of like, well, it isn't everything. Well, that's, that's just literally what I was about to say. Is that I suppose it's easy to because it's like it's like the bread and butter of perfumery, really. Yeah. Like everything has got a bergamot top note. It exactly. Like. It's like a bergamot top note, a musky base. You pretty much guarantee that's the case. Yeah. Oh, she <laughs> rhymes. <laughs> she rhymes. She's a poet, and she wasn't aware of that fact. <laughs> I was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I I basically learned to love bergamot mm. rather than kind of just be like. Oh, that's alright. Yeah. It's quite nice. Yeah. Um, which has been a fun sort of like experience. It's lovely. It's good to have you on board the Burgo train. It's, <laughs> on the Bergamot train. Because it is it is a glorious material. Yeah. So for me, Bergamot is one of my favourite smells, but specifically I've brought a box of tea bags from the oh. cupboard. Because my favourite smell in the world is Earl Grey tea bags. Mm. And as you know, Earl Grey tea started as tea, tea. with bergamot yeah. in it. Now it's more tea and kind of like a bergamot flavouring, which I imagine consists of lots of other wonderful things, including other citruses, I would think. Yeah. Looking at this box, it says lemon and bergamot flavouring. 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 It's still lovely, um, <laughs> but I love that smell of, like, you get a really strong bergamot smell from yeah. the tea. I don't know if you can really smell it on that bag, um, on that box, because it's a bit, it's been open for a while. I mean, it just smells a bit tea -y, yeah. if I'm really honest. Yeah. Which is, you know, a bit disappointing to yeah. actually. Through all this fanfare. Through <laughs> sure all this fanfare. Um, well, so this is I mean, I love the smell of tea, so yes. it's not actually, because I love tea. Yeah. Tea smells great. But like a freshly opened box of Earl Grey tea bags. Like yeah. Smell yeah. Because it's made that nice. I just wanted to bring something to the table, okay? <laughs> I wanted to contribute. <laughs> and I'm very sorry to say <laughs> <laughs> that's not really the case. <laughs> you brought nothing. You brought nothing. You are nothing. Oh. And you will always be nothing. I did not say any of those things. No, well, the subtext that we discussed. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. So we were Carry talking on. about bergamot. You love it. You'd overlooked it. And now... And now here we you are. You understand it. You I see eye to eye. I understand it. I've got an appreciation. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm really into it. Um, so it was really cool because we got to see the whole process of, like, them picking the... Well, not necessarily picking, actually, because they'd done it for the day by the time we got there. But... Um, right through from the bergamot being washed through the process that it goes through and turning it into an essential oil. I thought it was super cool mm. to see it happen. Um, so the, like the way that that works is you have two different machines that you can use, um, which are both cold pressing in inverted commas. And the one that was in action the day that we went was called the Pelletrice, which Pell Peel, right? Um, so it kind of basically, there was like a, a big uh, container with water and the bergamots were chucked in there and they're kind of like washed a little bit. And then they go up this little conveyor belt and into this rotating drum that has grating, um, I guess, I don't know what word I'm looking for, but like plates that grate yeah. it and it moves around and it kind of was like a washing machine with grating right, okay, happening. Cool. Um, and what, what surprised me was at that point they were introducing water. Okay. Because I had always been told that the way that you got oil out of citrus was to just press it. Yeah. But if you use the Pelletrice, you get a more full, um, oil, uh, and then they can separate out the water. So yeah. what actually came out was kind of like, uh, well, they, it's like described as an emulsion. Mm. So you've got bits of peel You've got the essential oil and you've got water all together that comes out of that. So out of the kind of grating washing machine <laughs> where the bergamot comes. And then they can also like reprocess that bergamot, squeeze it for the juice and stuff like that. Okay. Because they use it for flavouring okay. and so on. And then after that comes out, they've got this like big vibrating machine underneath that helps separate out some of the solids. 
So you've got like the peely bits yeah, that you don't the, want to have. Yeah. Um, and then they can use that for like composting and whatever else. So it was, it's, it's used. Uh, and then you've just got the emulsion left. And the emulsion is the water and the oil kind of mixed together. And then they put it through a centrifuge mm. so that they can separate it out. Um, and you get the oil and the water coming out separately. And then the oil is like this really murky colour. Okay. Um, so it's kind of like this really dark green, uh, especially through the pelletry too, because you get a lot of the chlorophyll that's naturally present. Um, so it's w quite sort of like surprising because I always think of bergamot oil as being clear and that's yeah. because most bergamot oil is decolorized. Yes. Um, and to use bergamot in perfumery, you have to re remove the veranocoumarins. Because they're photosensitizing. Them. Yes, they so are. So in high quantities, they yeah. can cause damage to the skin. Exactly. Bergaptine is the, the problem child in there. Um, and that's what's also present in hogsweed, which is why in the summertime, everyone says, be careful wearing hogsweed. Yeah. Because you get it on your skin and burn yourself. Yes. <laughs> Um, but the whole, like, the whole process was amazing to see, um, and, like, to experience the smell at different points was mm. quite intriguing yeah, and as well. Yeah, now it must change as well. Yeah, it because, of course, like, removing the Furano Creamerins does remove a little bit of the smell, mm. um, of the thing, but the oil that came out at the end was just, like, inc so incredible. Yeah. So, so incredible. I think it's one of the most immediately pleasing smells yeah i think you'd be hard pressed to find someone who doesn't like the smell of bergamot it's like sunny and clean and lovely and what was really cool there was like um <clears throat> apartment building just outside the factory and they were drying their like linens oh and i was God. and me and pia were like oh my god how good do they, like how good does their linen smell because it's just going to absorb all that bergamot oh, I oil bet that's they're in there sick of the smell of bergamot no, like, you would le never we be. would cray for some bloody lemons <laughs> around here <laughs> like jesus christ you said <laughs> Oh, it was sick of hearing it. Sick of these blooming bergamots on my sheets. <laughs> That's what they're like. I mean, they it was. It, it was absolutely. I was so jealous. Yeah. I was so. Je I mean, like, I'm sure they're just like, oh yeah, well, bergamot. Yeah. Because we live next to the factory. Yeah. Um, but it was it was so cool. Yeah. So so cool. And it's been historically used in perfumery for a very long time in lots of different ways. Yes. So actually, the way that they used to get it out, which I thought was really cool. Because we got to see one of the old like presses that they had, but they used to use sponges to get the oil out. Oh, and of they would soak the into the sponges. Yeah, so they would literally just be like rubbing a bergamot for hours to get the sponge out, and apparently they still do that for very very small processes at um at Capua. Okay. So they still will do like a sponge extraction of the bergamot oil. I think that must. I just, just yeah, sponge extraction the, is new to me. The, the amount of work. Yeah, I know. And hours. The that arms on yeah. these Italian men who are doing a sponge extraction. Jeez. <laughs> it just, it doesn't even bear thinking about. But it does at length. <laughs> and you will. And I will. I will be thinking of that. <clears throat> um, so we're going to smell some bergamot perfumes. Um, mm. Or perfumes with bergamot. But let's, should we start historically looking at some of the ones that have. Yeah. Because there's so, ones that have made like use of bergamot. In, and I don't want to say make it famous because obviously it was, it was used yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. But have been, you know, well known for bergamot. The other one. Yeah, we're just gesturing into each other. <laughs> sure. Is it this one? Or yeah. the other one? But they both are, aren't they? They're I related mean, they're both... these two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God. I haven't smelled this in ages. So this is the really nice jicky we've got on the cupboard that I have to try and not steal every time that I come here. Um, because... <laughs> just... just Double checking how much is that? Put a pen mark. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I mean, it's about half empty. It's about half empty. Because <laughs> um, the new Jicky does not smell anything like this. No. I mean, this this was a bottle I bought in... Oh, God knows how many years ago. But I was working in Cribs Causeway at the time. So that's 20 years? 20 years. 20 years ago. She's so old. Um, <laughs> it's probably about 20 years old. Yeah, jeez. Um, but it still smells great. Yeah, it does. So Jicky oh. has this, like, glorious... Like symphonic bergamot up top, mm. and but because of the animalics in Jiki, it kind of has like this breathy feel to it. Yeah, I, I like. I remember the first time I I bought this because people had been writing so many things about it, and I was like, I maybe just don't understand it or whatever, because the first thing I experienced when I smelled Jiki, which was the uh, EDT, yeah, I think was I thought it smelled a bit like halitosis. Yeah, it does. It has like halitosis vibe. <laughs> So, breathy is an interesting choice. Yeah, but I was trying to be diplomatic. So, well, it sounds um, like bad breath. Yeah, but I, there's a really nice kind of, like, brightness that it brings mm. in this in this fragrance. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah. 
So, just going back to the I just feel like Jiki wouldn't be Jiki without it. It's such a no. cool pillar in that fragrance. No, I mean, it It would not. But that, I mean, that's kind of like the foundation of the fougere yeah. style anyway. Is that kind of like bergamot top, uh, then the kind of lavender, coumarin yeah. thing that's going on. And then obviously in Jiki is a feral bit of vanillic sort of yeah, character as absolutely. well. Which leads us nicely to Shalimar. Shalimar, which is the first amber the first fragrance amber. in in inverted commas because it's not. Um, <laughs> Just like because like, wasn't the first sheep. No, but it's the one that they tell you is. Um, but Shalimar, famously, in inverted commas again because how famous is this? Was thirty percent of the formula was bergamot. Yeah, which is a mass. A ma oh, so I haven't smelled this in so long. This is the Eau de Toilette or the Eau de Parfum? Uh, great question, don't remember. EDT. So this is the EDT? Yes, the EDT. So this is the first time, this is the first Shalimar I tried was the EDT. Yeah. And it reminded me weirdly of school art classrooms. I don't know why, I think it was the powdered paint. Ah, uh, I totally, totally get what you mean. Mm. The powdered paint, oh my god, I remember that. Yeah, I think I prefer the EDT to the EDP now. I do too. Because the EDP goes very smoky. I find the EDP to be too fluffy. Mm. Um. Whereas the EDT has a, is more smooth mm. to me. Um, so that's what, that's where my preference lies as well. I mean, yeah. the Parfum is the Parfum, and that's what you really want to get. Yeah, I stuff. mean, it's like... Oh, wearing, you want that good stuff. It's like wearing butter on your skin. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is and, and this has got such a sparkle to it because of that bone of mine. Yeah. So, yeah, it's what kind of elevates it and makes it feel more than just kind of like a big heavy amber. Yeah. Because you've got all of that freshness, that lift, that brightness in the top. And yeah. it's not, like, it doesn't feel like bergamot oil either. No, it doesn't. You don't smell it and go, that's, oh, that's bergamot. bergamot. Which yeah. you do actually, to an extent, in Jiki, I think. you get. Yeah, I feel like, like you notice it a lot more in the Jiki. Which is really interesting because it's a fragrance that contains 30% of that material. You yeah. think it would be super bergamotty, but actually yeah. shows you how a high dosage of something actually really changes the odour profile. And mm -hmm. obviously that's working with all the other things in the fragrance. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily make you think, well, if you put 30% bergamot on something, it's going to really smell of bergamot. That's no, not actually... because it's not what happened at all. And I think that's probably what's surprising about it to people mm. as well. Because you kind of think, well, if there's that much of something in there, it must be part of the character. But it's also what is one of the great things about bergamot, and it's why it's in so many things, is that it doesn't actually dominate accords. It just brings a kind of like brightness, lift, freshness, and... Ooh sunniness yeah. to a fragrance yeah it's used kind of as like an opening yeah lightness I think. yeah and i think it does it shines light in a fragrance mm, as well it does it's glorious stuff god i love it I just keep sniffing the oil mm. <sighs> <sighs> very oh, satisfying lovely 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 yeah good old shalimar she's aged well she's aged well. <laughs> she has she really has i think they've done quite a good job maintaining mm. The style of Shalimar actually over the years. Yeah, I think so. Mm. Okay, so the next one we want to talk about is the one that is a just a straight up bergamot, a really good example of a bergamot fragrance that smells like bergamot. Yeah, that's a fair. That's like fair. That's, that's, that's like a fair description of bergamot. what this is. It yes. wants to kind of amplify just all says, of the different facets. Yeah, it says hi, I'm bergamot. Have nice we to met? Meet you. <laughs> yeah, I'm um, aboard the Burgo train. <laughs> and. It's from a brand that we've talked about a lot. We yeah. go on about how much we love their citruses a lot. So, mm. Tenny Cologne. And it's Bergamot Soleil. And this really r reminds me of being still outside the factory. Mm, it's gorgeous. In Calabria. So, it's zesty and fresh. And all of that kind of, like, freshly peeled or pulled apart Bergamot. Um, it just smells so good. It's really lovely. It just smells so good. So, you have some, like, kind of, like, fuzzy net. Yeah. But also it's quite sharp. So sharp in a lemon way, but also sharp in a grapefruit way. Yeah. So it feels like they've amplified those kind of acerbic sulfuric aspects. Of yeah, it. yeah, yeah. And then there's this very soft pepperiness mm. to it, um, which is, is naturally present in bergamot oil mm -hmm. as well. And I really, really noticed it when we were there. I know I keep going on about it. Yes. You I know. It. I was I get it. I wasn't. Uh, <laughs> I get it. But uh, that, yeah, that wasn't something I'd ever really picked up mm. before. And then now, having like tried the juice, which is so sour. Yeah, I can imagine it doesn't taste that nice. It was all right. It was just like super. Yeah, you're like wow. I can feel everything going mm. right back. Um, but the oh, but the sorbet. Sorry, I had been fantasizing about the sorbet <laughs> that we had <laughs> ever since. 
I need. I want to go back literally just to have more sorbet. More bergamot. It's an sorbet. expensive sorbet. It's a very We're expensive. A We're going to fly into Calabria to get bergamot sorbet, and that's it. And then we're coming home. No, I'm just going to stay there. I'm just going to stay there. Lots. I'll hang my linens out while I'm there. <laughs> yeah, take some laundry. Mm. Pop it outside the factory. <laughs> this is definitely one of the best Atelier Cologne fragrances, I think, because it's I the know. one that really showcases the material so beautifully. And when I say material, obviously there is so much more than bergamot going on yeah. here. But it kind of showcases all the different facets of it. Mm. And the name is perfect, like Bergamot Soleil. Obviously yeah. it's sunny and it's lovely and yellow bottle that it's got. It's, like, it's vibrant. Mm. And it has this wonderful, like, mossy character. <laughs> it was like, it's vibrant. It's vibrant, vivacious, <laughs> and very lovely. <laughs> She's bergamot. She's bergamot. Um, yeah, there's this real, and like a slight, like, mossiness, earthy, woody aspect, the slight peppery side, the the citrusy part that's pulled up, like the lemon grapefruit mm. that you mentioned. God, it's good. Mm. Just want to kind of like wash in it. Yeah, I, I feel like I, I want the shower gel, I and mean, they <gasps> must do one. Oh, do they? They must do. Oh. If they don't, then come on. I need, I need that. Yeah. <laughs> I need it. I just need it to like come out of my shower, just like the shower gel. <laughs> just like two, the whole sh the steam. Just all no, sorry. I had a, a brain fart of someone putting essential oils in their shower head yeah. um, and me going, What are you thinking? That'll mm. get in your eyes. But at the same time, <laughs> it would smell really good. <laughs> it would smell really lovely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, God, it's just great. Burning eyes never smell so good. No, <laughs> quite. I mean, Okay, he's, he's, just, he's spraying himself now. He's just showering. Just, we're just it. going in. It just smells so nice. I know. And this is like, like, lately, well, not lately, I mean, this has been a years long thing now. I just want to smell like fresh, clean things. Yeah. All the Stuff time. that smells good, I think it's important. Just it's, it's like just pleasant and easy. Just easy. Yeah. I, don't want, I don't need to challenge myself anymore. No. I'm too I old and tired for that. I don't, want, I don't want anything demanding. I just want it to smell nice. I just want to feel <laughs> easy. Life's too difficult to be smelling <laughs> like, I don't know, someone set fire to a shake shack. I don't, <laughs> I don't need that now. I don't, I've moved on from that. I've moved on from that. Just give me something that's got a lovely citrus top note and I am there. <laughs> Basically there. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, and speaking of a lovely citrus top note. Oh, yes. That's Bergamot. That's uh, no. <laughs> But let's have a sniff of this fragrance um, from Galavant, which is Brooklyn. So this is kind of like novel, modern, interesting bergamot. Yeah. So to me, this is bergamot 7-up, freesias, like white flowers, very fresh, clean, and then benzoin musky. So it's kind of a modern chalamar. To my mind. Yeah, I get it. Because it's kind of that... It's like that creamy, vanillic bergamot that gives it that vibe. They yeah. don't smell like... They are not worlds apart. They no. might be a few states apart, maybe. Yeah. But they're, they're, they're kind of similar. I get a lot sim similar to you. It's kind of fizzy and it's bubbly. I get like enough, kind of like a bergamot sherbet yeah. vibe. And then for me, it's like freshly cleaned white t-shirts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, and like sneakers that are just like fresh out of the box, like that like pure white, no, mm -hmm. no mud on them. I was, there was someone on the tube this morning and his Air Force Ones were so clean. And I was like, how have you done? I have to buy like black or yeah. colored drinks because I just ruined them. You know, that guy keeps white wipes in his bag and he's wiping yeah. them down throughout the probably. day. Probably. Throughout the day. Probably. Because I'm like, <laughs> I just like, I get too involved in these things. But God, they're so white. Yeah. I always start like, like shoes, like I'm like, these are going to stay clean. And like, by day be... three, I'm like, I'm buying new shoes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I just can't do it. Mm. But yeah. <laughs> so this is another one where you don't recognize bergamot as bergamot but you recognize bergamot as that sunny sparkly thing in the top yeah which is what i think they called it bergamot because that sunny sparkly thing in the top wasn't catchy enough yeah i, th I think that's probably the reason that was the reason. that's probably the reason that they called it that i mean it's always one of those things that i find oops i find it really interesting when people so sort of say oh i love bergamot it's my favorite note and i'm like what? <laughs> yeah. But then at the same time, it's so useful. Yeah. And the effect that it has is so wonderful. But there are very few, I feel like there are very few decent Bergamot Solly flaws, which the Atelier Cologne really addresses. Yeah. So there are a couple that have left me like wanting more, which yeah. was um, the Aqua Allegoria Bergamot 
Calabria from Galan. Okay. Lovely fragrance. Wanted a bit more of the like, I don't know. I think they missed like the the kind of like gauziness from them. Yeah. Which is my favourite part. And then there's the Aqua de Parma, which I think is Bergamotto, Bergamotto di, di Calabria. Calabria. Yeah. Which is nice. And I would say probably until I'd smell the Electelia clone was probably one of the Up best ones. But you. that just kind of blows them all yeah. out of the water. Yeah, I think so. Because it's so good. I think it's kind of like the reference. Here's a Bergamot fragrance. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think it's pretty, pretty squish. It's pretty great. But I'm, uh, yeah, sorry. Like, that's a bit of a... Tangent, yeah. Tangent, because I was going to say how much I like Brooklyn. Yeah, I think Brooklyn <laughs> just shows like, you how, in, doing? how important um, bergamot is. That even in, you know, it's been around for so long, it's used in so many fragrances, that even now when you're doing something modern, fresh and exciting, mm. it's still like a staple. Yeah. And it can still be novel and interesting and different. N- nodding... Forcefully. Yes. Yeah, I'm glad you said agreement. that because because it's know, not visible. Podcasts a podcast. famously are a visual medium, <laughs> um, and our, our readers, I'm sure, will. <laughs> Sorry, I I feel like I've become slightly delirious. Yes. No, I don't know what's happening. We've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> Being delirious. We've stopped several times for the dog. Yeah, we have. Um, it's been. <laughs> who's now sleeping? Thanks. Great. Well done, Pugsley. Pugsley the perfume pug. I don't know what you think of... What do you think of this? What do you think? No, he doesn't want to not, He's it. not into he's it. He's not into it. Okay. Like Much it. like my chipsticks. <laughs> um, <laughs> which he also was not into, no, even though he was begging for them. Yes, he will beg for food that he doesn't even want to eat. Yeah. Anyway, well, okay. it's been a blessing. Well, we would be keen to know what your favourite bergamot fragrances are. And mm-hmm. if there are any other notes that you would like us to focus on, then we will happily do that. We are in the very fortunate position that we have a lot of perfume and we also have access to lots of materials. Mm. Um, so we can do this on like loads of materials, I guess. We could do it on loads of things. We could do it on loads of things. Um, we might choose not to, but that's because we have free will. <laughs> um, but if you want to know more, or if you'd like to hear more, if you'd like to speak to us, if you'd like to <laughs> send abuse to us, uh, you can find us at Fume Chat on all of the social media, except for TikTok, see previous episode. Um, yeah, and I'd like to add, would you like a final, like a Jerry Springer's final thought on Bergamot? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I don't have any final thoughts. Um, I think my brain emptied a, okay. minute, a moment ago. Right. And I was just like, oh no. And <laughs> Great. Well, I can always count on you. <laughs> um, my final thought on Bergamot is that it is very, very nice. <laughs> and I wish they used it more because it's underused. The insight. The insight. Yeah, yeah. Come for the searing insight <laughs> that we give you on future. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Okay, goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Fume Chat is an all fiction production produced by Thomas Duncan and Nick Gilbert. All fragrances discussed during this episode were provided by the brands for consideration and we were not sponsored to feature them. If we were, we would tell you because we are nice. You can subscribe to Fume Chat on iTunes and Spotify if you like us, and you can follow us everywhere at Fume Chat and on FumeChat.com. Time to start the show. It's Fume Chat, yeah, Fume Chat.